Hey, thanks for watching this video. There's more at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and there is the pie guy. All right, this is third grade, module seven, lesson 29. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue practicing area and perimeter and, and in a, a variety of word problems. It's really just kind of giving students a chance to pause, not move on to new content, and instead just focus on practicing and developing a deep understanding of that measurement, those two measurement ideas of perimeter and area. So let's get started. I'm going to go pretty fast, so parents and teachers, make sure your students understand that they can always hit the pause button. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, Catherine puts two of these squares together to make a rectangle, and the side lengths of the squares measure eight. So each of these side lengths is eight. And so the idea would be, if I wanted to, I could zoom in and I could say, well, he, this distance here is 8, this distance here is 8, this distance is 8, because everything is, a, you know, each of these are squares. So these are all 8s, and that's what we're supposed to glean from that information, that they're squares. So the question is, what is the perimeter that of this rectangle that Catherine has made? So remember, perimeter is that distance around the entire figure. So it's going to be 8 plus 16, and then we're going to double it because, of course, we have another 8 plus 16 on the other side. So if we wanted to uh, mathematize that, we would say the perimeter is 2 times the length plus the width. So that's going to be 2 times 8 plus 16, and I'm going to go up here, so that's going to be 2 times, what is that, 24, which is 48. So it's 48 inches. So going all the way around this rectangle is 48 inches. Now they're asking, what's the area of that rectangle? Well, keep in mind, that rectangle has a length of 8 and a width of 16 or vice versa, because I can never remember which is which. <laughs> and so area is length times width. So for this problem, that's going to be 8 times 16, which is 128. And it's 128 inches squared. So remember, what they're saying is to completely tile this rectangle, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, close enough, right? Um, we would need 128 s square tiles in order to make this figure, and that's what that means. And the last, it says Catherine decides to draw another rectangle the same size and arrange it this way. What's the area of the new rectangle? Well, we got to keep in mind this was 16, which means this is 16, which means the entire width right here must be 32 inches. So the area is length times width. In this case, it's going to be 8 times 32, which is going to be 256 square inches. All right, now parents and teachers, this problem really ex is a great example of why reading a math problem is so gall darn hard and why it's so different from reading just a typical third grade book. Um, the, the content, the importance per word when you're reading a math problem is so much higher than the importance per word when you're reading uh, some sort of narrative. So this is so hard. So let's get started. So it says Daryl draws six equal-sized rectangles. So these are all the same kind, the same size rectangles, and uh, to make a larger rectangle. There we go. And then it says the area of one of the two small rectangles is 12 square 
centimeters. So what does that mean? So I'm going to zoom in and we're going to focus on one of these rectangles and we are told that the area of this rectangle right here is 12 square centimeters. So we are told that the area is 12 square centimeters. All right. Now remember, area is supposed to be length times width. Uh, so if we know the width is 4, because it says so right here, and we know the answer is supposed to be 12, that tells us the length must be 3. So in uh, hardly any words at all, we are supposed to have to figure out that this length right here, from here to here, is 3 centimeters. So when it says, um, where does it say it? It says the area of one of the small rectangles is 12 centimeters, we needed to do all of this thinking in order to understand that if the area is 12 centimeters squared, that means this little distance has to be 3 centimeters. And then it says, and the width of the small rectangle is 4 centimeters. Well, we knew that because the picture said so. All right, so that fortunately this little piece doesn't add any information that we didn't already know. So now the question is, what is the perimeter of this big, huge, new rectangle? So remember, we need to know all of these lengths. Well, we know that if this one is 3 centimeters, then this piece is 3 centimeters. We were told that this is 4, so that means each one of these on the top and the bottom is going to be 4 centimeters. And I'm just going to put in 4s here. And we know that each one of these over here is the same as over here on the left, so these are also 3s. So if we want to know the perimeter, we need to add all of these numbers. Now, a quick way to do it would be to add the length here, that's 6, plus the width here, so 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. Add those together and times by 2, because if you have a length and width over here, you also have a length and width over here, so you got to times it by 2. So eight, uh, 6 plus 12 is 18. And then 18 times 2 gives us 36. So that equals 36. So our perimeter is 36 centimeters. And what's the area of this rectangle? Well, remember, area is length times width. And in this case, the length is 6 because 3 plus 3 is 6. And the width is 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. So that's going to be 6 times 12, which is equal to 72 centimeters squared. So 72 little square tiles are needed to completely cover this entire figure. And if we wanted to walk around this rectangle, we would have to walk 36 centimeters. 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4, blah, 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 blah. and that's it. The last problem kind of bringing it all home, the Recreation Center soccer field measures 35 yards by 65 yards. So let's draw that. I'm not sure if it's going to be important, but let's draw it anyway. So our soccer field is going to look like this, and this I've decided is the 35 yards, and this is the 65 yards. Let's go back and read it. It says, Chris dribbles the soccer ball around the perimeter of the field four times. And that's kind of an important thing. He does it four times. And then the question is, what is the total number of yards that Chris dribbles the ball? Well, let's figure out one time around the block. All right, and remember, one time around the block is length plus width, and then times by two because we're going to have two of them. 
So let's see, length times width, I mean length plus, I might have said times by accident. Length plus width is 100. So that's 100 yards, which means over here, this length plus width is also 100 yards. And so we're times by 2. 100 times 2 gives us 200 yards. So the perimeter is 200 yards. But he goes around the field four times. So 200 times 4 gives us 800 yards. So what's the total number of yards that Chris dribbles? It will be 800 yards. And that wraps up third grade, module seven, lesson 29, bringing it all home with some word problems to practice area and perimeter.